Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today we'll be discussing all of the MacBook Air's base models. So we'll start with the M1, the iconic wedge shape. Then we'll go over to the M2. Now the M2 is the one that I'm currently using. And then we'll go on to the M3. And then we'll go over to the M4. So all of these laptops, we'll be comparing each and everything right from the display to the battery and speakers, the processor, everything. So let's get started. If you look at the M1, the M1 has the iconic wedge shape that Steve Jobs brought to the MacBook Air. If you open it up, you'll see that there is the screen has obviously much more bezels than the M2, M3 and the M4. And as well as the keyboard, it's not exactly full sized. The function keys, the keys at the top, they are of smaller height. Then if you look at the trackpad as well, the trackpad is also a little bit small. Then we have the MagSafe charging that's missing here. It only has two ports and one usually is for charging. So having said that M1 was plenty powerful and still is, but more importantly, it doesn't come with 16 GB RAM for its base model. The base model comes with 8 GB of RAM. And that problem continues until M3, until M4 addressed that problem with 16 GB of base RAM. Next, let's talk about the display. As for the display of the M1, the M1 has a little less brightness than the other MacBook Airs. The M1 has around 400 nits of peak brightness, whereas the M2, M3 and the M4 have 500 nits of peak brightness. So if you're working, during the day, then yes, M1 will be a little less bright and you might not see things clearly as you would do with the M2, M3 and the M4. Then you have charging. So for charging, again, as I mentioned, this doesn't have MagSafe, but all of the others do have. So yeah, if you're charging your laptop, then one port is automatically occupied and then you have to buy USB hubs. Let's talk about the brain of this laptop, the M series chip. Now with the M1, M2, M3 and the M4 chip, I would say from the M1 to the M4, the latest one, the leap is somewhere around 60%. Now it's not that big of a leap that I would say you should upgrade, but in your daily tasks, like what the MacBook Air is meant to do, you wouldn't notice a difference, at least not a significant difference. But when you're doing CPU intensive tasks, like video editing, photo editing and all, then you will find maybe a noticeable difference, especially when it comes to rendering, then the rendering time would be reduced. If you use for daily tasks, you know, checking emails, watching a video, uh, browsing the internet, even opening 10, 15 tabs in one go, all of that, you won't see any difference between an M1 right up until the M4. So processor wise, that's not that big of a difference in daily day-to-day uh, -day usage, I would say. And when it comes to GPU, GPU has a similar story, uh, around about 60 to 80% increase, but GPU would be much more apparent than the CPU itself. Because when you're using the GPU, especially for GPU related tasks like video editing, then you would notice quite a bit of a difference. So here are the rendering times on M1, M2, M3, and M4 for the same piece of video. And you can see there is a difference between the M1 and the M4. And if you are rendering a lot on these laptops, then in day to day, that would make, a, I think, a significant difference. Now, beyond these raw speeds, there are some caveats that you also should know. There is a problem with the M2 SSD. With the M2 SSD, it only uses a single NAND chip. What that means is the read write speeds are comparatively lower than the M1 on the M2 processor. But that has been fixed in the M3 and the M4 models. So while it wouldn't impact, I would say 99% of the users, you would only see this difference when you are running a benchmark. Otherwise, in day-to-day -day life, that wouldn't make a difference at all. The second is external display. Now, this is a big thing. On the M1 Mac, you can only put a single external display out. That means two displays can be functional at the same time. One of your MacBook and the second an external display. On the M2 and the M3, you can connect up to two displays, but those displays are only functional if the lid is down. Whereas uh, this issue has been fixed on the M4. So the M4 can power two external displays while it is open, like it's supposed to do. 
So yeah, if you are a heavy multitasker and you connect up to two displays, then yeah, you should go for the M4, not for the others. The last question is of connectivity. Now for connectivity, the M3 and the M4 have Wi-Fi 6E, whereas the M1 and the M2 only support Wi-Fi 6. You know, most of the homes out there don't have Wi-Fi 6 routers. If you do, then yes, you can take advantage of it. But if you are still on 2.4 or 5 gigahertz, then it wouldn't really make a difference. So again, you need to know as to what router you are having. Just because there is a more advanced chip here doesn't mean that you will get faster speeds. So what's my verdict? Which one should you buy? So I will divide into two groups. One group is the daily user. You know, you're just checking your email, maybe browsing here and there on the internet and just making a few calls, you know, Google Meet, Teams or FaceTime calls on, on your laptop, nothing more. For those users, I would recommend that the M1 is still a very, very good laptop. Even though it's got 8 GB of RAM, it's still extremely good. With a bit of shortcomings, you know, with its display being not as bright as the M2, M3, M4 and uh, the keys at the top, those are a little smaller, but then again, they don't really make that much of a difference. The touchpad is a little small than the other models and you don't have MagSafe. If you're ready to compromise on all of these things, then the M1 is still a very, very capable machine. It'll last you for the next at least six to seven years. And you can easily get this in the secondhand market for around 35 to 45,000, depending on what condition you buy it in. So yeah, this is still a very good buy. Now M2 is a machine, this one, M2. This is a machine that I would recommend to people who don't really like the caveats of the M1, but they want the higher brightness, they want the max save, maybe the keyboard appeals to them a little bit more with the function keys of full width, the touch ID sensor being a little bigger and the trackpad also being bigger. Then maybe you can invest in 15,000 more in the second hand uh, by a market, get yourself an M2 base model. And yeah, you'll get a better machine for what you're paying. That 10, 15,000 extra premium that you're paying, you are getting a better machine. So I would say that it's worth it. The M2 over the M1 upgrade is definitely worth it. Now let's talk about the M3. Now with the M3, that's a particularly odd duck, I would say. I would not recommend the M3 to anyone. The generation leap from the M2 to the M3 is very less. There aren't any major changes. It still supports the same thing what the M2 supports. They fixed a few things that were wrong with the M2 and the M3, which you wouldn't have noticed either ways. Even if you're getting a good deal on it, go either for the M2 or the M4. M3 is just not worth it. And then finally, you have the M4. I bought the M4 on the Amazon sale for around 84,000. Now, I would recommend this laptop for anyone who wants to get a new laptop. They want to future-proof a bit and they are a power user, you know. So initially, I mentioned I'll divide this into two groups. This is the second group I'm talking about. So if you're a power user, you know, you like to open 20, 30 tabs on Chrome, you like opening five, six applications in one go. You do video editing, photo editing occasionally. Now, if you do all of these things, then M4 is your laptop. And over here, I'm just talking about base models. So if you're a power user, you'll have to skip the M1, M2, M3 base models. You can't go for them. You have to go for the M4 base model that comes with 16 GB RAM, 256 storage. That's with each and every one of them. And this will future-proof you for... I would say at least a decade because 16 GB RAM is enough for any task that you can throw at it. The M4 is a capable machine and you definitely will not have any complaints from this machine. Another thing I would like to add, if you are a power user and if you don't want to go for the M4, you know, maybe it's too expensive for you. You want a cheaper machine. Then I would say you can either go for the M1 or the M2. 16 GB variant, if you can find it. Now, those variants are generally hard to find. And if you can, then that might be a good deal for you. Those variants, the 16 GB variants, they command a premium of somewhere around five to 10,000 over the base variant. So let's say you have an M1 at uh, 40,000 base variant. The 16 GB variant would cost you somewhere around 45 to 50,000. If you want to go for a secondhand variant, which costs less, then an M1 still does a very, very good job. The M2, if you go for the 16 GB variant, that would cost you somewhere around 65, 60 to 65, and that'll be very close to the M4. So 
you know, being a 20,000 difference and you have an EMI option on this as well, I would say that's too close of a difference and you'd be better off going for the M4 rather than the M2 second hand. But to each their own, if you feel that you'd rather save 20,000 bucks today than pay an EMI on this, go for the M2 16 GB. But personally, if you ask me, I would go for the M4 16 GB variant at 84,000 and that would future proof me for hopefully the next decade. That's my comparison video for all of these laptops. And this one. Let me know if you have any questions or if you found this video helpful in making your next purchase. Thanks for watching.